And indeed, that's all we're focusing on tonight. It's a lot of talk about money. But listen, beyond the new currency and how you feel about it, and obviously all the controversy about uh, whether there is a statue or a likeness of an individual, this is a big step in our economy. But do we understand just what it means and what it is likely to do to the economy? Why are we doing it in the first place? Well, to note, first of all, let's just break it down and understand what this word means. Demonetization is basically the withdrawal of a coin, a note, or precious metal, or whatever is used as a currency, it could be cowrie shells, whatever, from use as legal tender. And so that is exactly what we're doing it. Why are we doing it? Well, there's a number of reasons, and we'll get to uh, one of them, particularly with the 1,000 shillings note. But remember, this is actually meeting a constitutional requirement. When we promulgated the constitution in 2010, we said we wanted new currency. We said, according to Article 231, Section 4, that we don't want the portraits of individuals, but we wanted it to celebrate icons of Kenya, the economy, the industry, and the socioeconomic aspects of this country. So in fact, as it turns out, we are a couple of years late because according to the schedule, we had about five years to do it since 2010. There was a lot of legal issues. Those were sorted out and here we are now. So number one, it is a constitutional requirement that we promulgated. But then there is also the issue of illicit financial flows and corruption and hoarding of money. And this is what uh, the central bank governor said in his Madaraka Day speech. He talked about the older 1,000 shillings note series that are being used for illicit financial flows, not just here in the country, but also in the region. More recently, we have seen the emergence of counterfeits, which is why he said there will be the withdrawal of the old 1,000 shillings note by October the 1st. That's about 120 days from today. Now, just how much money are we talking about in the country? Well, this is the value of the currency in the country right now. 261.9 billion. If you break it down to just those constituent um, currencies, the values there, of the 1,000 shilling note, there are 217.6 million pieces of it. This is now what we're now calling the old one. Of the 500 shilling note, there's 30.8 million pieces. And for the 200 shilling note, 54.8 million shilling pieces. And 126.4 million pieces of the 100 shillings note. Now, it's interesting to note here that about 40% of our currency is in the 1,000 shillings note. This is why money laundering corruption and hoarding of cash is easier when you have a bigger um, denomination and that is what they are targeting right now that 1000 shillings note so as has been told to you many times but it is still important to continue to tell you this because you have 120 days you are going to be able between now and october the first to take your money to the bank and change it particularly the 1000 shilling note that's what we're talking about right so if you have notes valued at less than a million shillings you can take this to your bank the one you bank with. If you don't have an account, you can go to any branch of any bank or even to the CBK, you will need an official ID. If you have between 1 million and 5 million shillings, you can go to your bank if you have an account. If you don't have an account, you must get um, an endorsement from the Central Bank of Kenya and they will then direct you to a designated bank branch. If you have over 5 million shillings and CBK says there are very few of these, at least that's what they hope, then you go straight to the CBK and they then endorse that and authorize it before you can. So why are we demonetizing and what are the benefits? What are the pros and cons? Why even bother with this process besides the fact that it is a constitutional requirement in our case? Well, these are some of the advantages. So one, trying to get fake currency out of circulation. That one is uh, fairly obvious. And number two, you would be disrupting, even if temporarily, illegal activity. You would be starving, say, terrorists 
of funds because most of them deal in cash. So you'll be disrupting at least fraudsters in that respect. Tax collection will increase. All of these people who are hoarding this money in what we call mattress accounts will now bring it into the financial, formal financial system and KRA will be able to then tax it. And because there will be more money in the banks now that will be saved, then there will be a reduction of lending rates. But there's also some cons to this and some of them are short term and it is important. Well, in the interim, there could be a cash crunch, a major disadvantage because of the unavailability of small currency denominations. Um, and this will also depend on how quickly we're able to remonetize and put back those new notes into the economy. And of course, during this time, a slowdown in economic growth, um, a disruption of trade, the normal trading activities may be disrupted because, you know, uh, money is short, consumers and suppliers are adjusting also to the new monetary policy. And here's another important one, panic and confusion, because perhaps not everybody understands the essence of demonetization and the process of it. How do you get your money to the bank? By what time? That is why CBK have said and they've promised and uh, we hold them to this that there will be a lot of uh, consumer awareness. There will be a big public campaign on this and that is partly what we're doing now. So between now and then and remember, don't be like the time of Huduma number. We need to get this done quickly. And in certain cases, like of course in the cases of India, which is what a lot of people are making comparisons with, um, the economy actually shrunk by 1.5% when you take a look at GDP. There was loss of lives. There was actually about 150 million workers who, you know, the daily wage earners, you know, your mamamboga, the lady you have clean your house, who were not paid for a short period of time at least because there was a shortage in the currency. But India and Kenya are different. India has a population of slightly over a billion people. They had just 50 days to change their money. We are at about 50 odd million people and we have 120 days to get this done. The governor of central bank says they have learned from the mistakes of India and will be doing this. So these are some of the pros and cons of it. But at the heart of it, the success of demonetization in the country will depend on one man, one office, and that is a central bank governor whose term has just been renewed for another four years. Effective monitoring of the currency and the cash flow within the economy. So this is why we do it. This is what can go wrong and hopefully this will be a successful one. But remember, across various countries, there has been mixed reviews of this. So many countries have done this. Australia did it. Nigeria and Ghana as well did it in 1984. India in 2016. Singapore in 1945. So this is nothing new. But let's see the success of this um, right here in the country.